それではお時間となりましたので始めさせていただきます13時からはダオダキャマラさんから「Moving our batches to containers」を登壇させていただきますそれではよろしくお願いいたしますダオダマイクイズヨースオッケー、Thank you Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So, thank you for joining. Let me start sharing my screen. Can you all see my screen? Okay. So, let me start. So,、uh, my name is、uh, Dauda Kamara, and I'm from Guinea. I'm an application engineer at Rakuten, and I have five years working experience. And this is my first time presenting at a conference, so I will be a little bit nervous. And I'm an application engineer, but yeah, I also do testing, I also do deployment, so I can consider myself as a DevOps. So let's start. So, I belong to the ranking department of Rakuten. So, we do the ranking of、uh, Rakuten e commerce products. So, we have like daily ranking, we have、uh, real time ranking, we have weekly ranking. We also rank product based on the genre, like, for example, ranking for food or ranking for, for games. So, We provide all of them. So, if you want to, if you would like to see, you can access the URL below. And so, the content of this presentation first, we start with why we migrated our batches to containers. And then we're going to talk about the difficult journey. So, basically, the implementation part. And then also, and what we gain, I mean, the benefits and some recommendations. So, our journey to containers. So, it was cloudy. So, we move our batches to clouds. And how many of you have heard about Wild Beast, this animal? So, Wild Beast is an animal in Africa. So, it's known for moving from place to place. So, what's special about this animal is that this animal. Migrate so it moves from place to places. So, this animal doesn't migrate alone, it migrates、uh, together, it's like in group. So, you can see in this picture, these animals are crossing rivers. Well, that is a difficult journey for them. So, sometimes they get beaten by, by crocodile, they, they get killed by lions. So, it's not an easy journey for them. So, it's a difficult one. So, why would they have to risk their lives to, to migrate, to go from one place to another place? So, basically, if it's for their survival. They want to migrate to places whereby they can find abundant food so, and also water. So, it's important for their lives. So, the same way, migrating our batches. To containers is also very critical for our business or for our batches. So, the reason why we migrated our batches is that our batches were running on physical servers. And those physical servers they have a risk of dying. So, we cannot take the risk of letting our server die and our batches are there. So, it's not good for our business. So that's one of the reasons, most that's the first reason we, we migrate our batches to containers. And there was another reason, which is、uh, reducing maintenance cost of our service. So, like for example, we migrated our Redis server to Coachbase. It's, it's, it's going to be costly to have two of the, these two databases with us to maintain. So, we moved to cloud containers. So, why we moved to cloud containers? We already had uh, uh, internal we already had internal cloud system. And 
and we wanted to avoid hardware failure. So it was safe to, for us to move into cloud. And we did not choose virtual machines because virtual, virtual machines are expensive to maintain. We, our internal tools already had like good support. We had tools and also integrated with Jenkins. So it was like easy for us to choose them. So I will give a one example of ranking. So one of the ranking we provide is coupon ranking. So coupons are used in uh, recruiting uh, websites where if you wanna purchase something, you can use coupon for discount. So if you wanna see coupon ranking, coupon ranking, you can access the link below in this URL. And coupon ranking badge is the badge that's responsible to, to provide ranking of the coupons. So it is one of the batches that we migrated. So we migrated alongside together with Redis. So this is the, the overview of how it works. So we get the batch data and then the coupon ranking batch will rank the, the, the coupons based on the batch data. And then from there, it will create the JSON data. So the JSON data is the ranking of the coupon. It stores that one in Coachbase. And then after that, the API will read from Coachbase. And then after that, the web will just get it from the API. So yeah, it's a difficult journey. So our journey to clouds will lead to a Sakura, <laughs> a beautiful flower. So this is our architecture before the migration. So the, before the migrations, the data were stored in Redis. And then the API, we have an API that reads the data from Redis. And we have our web application. So the web applications is getting the data from API and from Redis. So, and also our badges were writing to Redis. So this, pro, this, this components, the API were handled by different group of people and the same for web app for the, the front application. The front application is handled by another group of people. And we also have our batch handled by another group of people, but then they're all part of the migration. So we had to communicate. So the communication, good communication was necessary for the project to succeed. So we organized like weekly sharing, sharing status whereby we, we share our progress. And also we, we do the planning. How are we going to to safely migrate and how we're going to release yeah, everything. And then, so here is our architecture to be after the migration. So we, were, we are going to abandon the Redis and we are going to switch to Coachbase. But why we choose Coachbase also? It's because we already had Coachbase used by some of our new system. So it was easier for us to you know, use Coachbase. So the batches will write to Coachbase instead of Redis, and then the API will get the data from Coachbase, and the front end, instead of directly reading from the data store, is going to read it from the API. So we, are, we had to stop uh, the web application from reading the data from Coachbase directly. So that's a lot of work to do. And so a careful planning is very, yeah, it's required here because it's complex migration. So one of them is because we are going to, to move all our, our requests to Coachbase instead of Redis and Coachbase is already being used. So we have to be careful not to put like 100% loads. Who knows, maybe the Coachbase would, would, would crash. So we have to be careful about it. So first we, might, we release the batch so that we, we only redirect 5% of our reads to Coachbase. Then after that, we do another release. And uh, this release, we redirect only 25% of our read to Coachbase. Then after that, we do a 50% release. Then after the 100% release. So in this way, so we are safe. So if 50% release was okay, then like theoretically it would be okay to, to move to 100% read. So, this is not the only uh, strategy that we 
we implemented. There are many. So the coupon ranking batch, for example, we have like uh, the old one is still running in production. So we want to release a new one, but we are not going to directly remove, like stop the old one and then run the new one. So you have to be careful. So what we did, we released the, the coupon batch alongside the new one, alongside with the old one. So first, for example, we, the, we released the batch to write data to coach base. And then after that, we released the API. I mean, we modified the API to read the data from coach base instead of Redis. So that's another release. Then after that, we modified the front application to read the data from API instead of from directly from the data source. So that's another release. And then after that, we have to stop our batch. So that's like after we release it, then uh, we comp we stop the old we compare the old one with the new batch. The, the the output is the same. So we do the comparison like for like let's say for weeks, see if it's everything's okay. Then after that, we stop the old one and we use the new one. So of course it, we had some design issue too. So our data from Redis, we migrated them to Coachbase cluster, for example. So the Coachbase cluster, so the data and Redis, we split them, we split the data. And then we, we, we store some in cluster A and some of them in cluster B, but we already had a library, a shared library that was, uh, that, that we used to read data from Coachbase. But then this, this library was, uh, was using singleton pattern. So basically it's like, it's connected to only one data cluster, but our front application needed the data from both cluster. So this one also created some complications. So we had to redesign the, the, the library and the library was used by many other applications. So we had to be like very careful. Uh, we have to make changes so that we don't have to redeploy all those applications. Yeah, so it, was, it wasn't that easy. And the batches were very old. The batches were seven years old at least. And so a good understanding of the batches is, is required. We don't have knowledge. Of course, we have uh, team members who are already been working on the batch for so long. So if you needed some help, we consulted them, but it was difficult for us to uh, understand the badges, the logic, it gets fired from many places. So yeah, it's, it wasn't that easy. And the unit tests, some of the unit tests were broken and we had to fix them. Yeah, so that, that took a lot of time. And then we had to perform long list of uh, uh, functional testing. So, so to make sure that yeah, everything's work, working as expected. So we also did some like abol abolition. So we stopped some some of the some of our batches, and we stopped. Uh, we removed some of the unused codes or some of unused components. So, but we are happy to do that because we do not have to put effort to understand those uh, those things. So, uh, of course, we had to do thorough testing. So we did the development, we did the testing deployment. We also have to monitor the batches after we deploy them. So we do at every stage, uh, we do it from our local, we do unit test and we run the, we run the unit test locally, 100% it's okay. Then after that, we move to functional testing. Functional testing, which we deploy to our, our environment beta or station environments, whereby we, we test uh, uh, the, the application and uh, the batches to confirm that it works. Then after that, we do system test. System test is when we compare the new system with the, the one in production to see whether it's okay. Then after that, we also do test run. That's like before we do release. So we, we, we release to pre-release. Then after that, we, we test the, the batch in, in pre-release to see whether it's working on us before going to production. So it wasn't that easy implement migration. So we move our batches to containers. So the containers in, cl in Kubernetes cluster, basically. So we already have uh, uh, our internal cloud and also 
it's integrated with Jenkins. So it was easier for us. And we to create new containers, basically we just have to go to Jenkins and then we create application from there. It will create a Git repository. And the Git repository will contain Jenkins files, deployment YAML, deployment YAML, that's for Kubernetes, then also Docker file. And we just have to modify that. And of course, we'll have our 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 uh, batches repositories, and the the deployments. So how the Jenkins deployment works is that we have uh, these four steps. We have the initialization, we have the build, we have the containerize, and we have the deploy. So in the in initialization step, so initialization step. We check out all the Git repositories. So, Git repository for our batch. If you are using uh, many, uh, the number of batches that you're using for every batch, you have to check them out. And after that, the 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 Git repository that contains the uh, deployment YAML file, the Jenkins, everything, the configuration of the container. That one we we check check it out. And also, and we had another another. Another Git repository that that was handling uh, the Chrome tab and some uh, common functionality. So we check them out in the build step. So we just compile and build our project, and then in the Dockerize step, the Dockerize step we create the Docker image and we set the environment variable, the Chrome tab, and then the deployment step is where we push it to Kubernetes cluster. So for Kubernetes cluster, we have like many environments. We have the development environments, we have the staging, and we also have production. So for the development environment, we just use it for when we, during the migration, the development phase, if you want to test the, our, our batches before, uh, before deploying, before release, we just use the deployment server. So we have the develop, development, and we also have the staging. The staging is when we want to do like QA or we want to compare uh, the, the batches with the production. So basically that's, the, this is the environment that we use. And then we have the production, of course, that's where we, uh, the production is. Uh, so this is our container structure. So we have many batches. So we, we allocated a few containers, let's say for example, three containers, but each containers will have many batches. So the, for example, a container can have four batches. You have, let's say, batch A, batch B, batch C, batch, batch D. But the containers are some, uh, we have like common functionalities that, for example, wait process. The wait process, for example, if the container want to die and then there's a batch that's running, so we need to wait for those batch, uh, we need to wait for that batch to finish before uh, destroying the container or the ports. Basically, we have the cron type configure for all the batches, and we also have the error alerting. So if there is a, if there is an error, so we have the alert sending sending email, and we also have the log monitoring. Of course, the log monitoring from there we get if we find an error, we send an, an alert, and we have also share secret. And for the storage, we don't we don't store the data on container because the containers, if you restart it, the data will get lost. So unless you use volume, but we do not use volume because because of security issues. So we had like uh, our backup server, whereby whenever the batch run, the output of the batch, we send the, those data into the backup server, and then the backup server is mounted into a network access. Uh, application server there. And for the deployments, before this, the deployment was manual. So if you want to deploy a batch, we had to uh, connect into that server. And we do git checkout and whatever configuration that we want to do. And then after that, we modify the cron tab, then after we release it. But then now it's we don't have to do that. So we just have to make a Jenkins bit so easier. And then after that, we promote our application from development, we promote to, to uh, staging, then after that, we promote to, to release. And yeah, so during this journey, we also did a lot of improvements. 
So one of them is like get rid of some some codes that's logic that we are not using anymore. So yeah, we are happy doing that. And then also we had like a lot of uh, comments in Japanese and we had a lot of uh, English speaking developers. So it would be better if we translate that. So we translated these comments into English and we upgraded some of our package, like for example, database uh, connectors. And we, we fixed some non-critical odd bugs that we found in the odd batches. Yeah, we improved the code quality and the error logs also to be make it meaningful and yeah so we did it all within within the schedule so that was the journey so what we gained from it of course we had um we reduced the deployment time so it's like six minutes to deploy a container from a Jenkins build instead of if you have to take like 10 minutes to deploy just one batch yeah, so imagine if you have like uh, five batches, how long it's going to take? Probably it's like 15 minutes. Uh, but with uh, only one, with, with this one is six minutes, you can you can deploy all those five batches all together into one container, easy. And of course we had the good ROI. So I would say 90%, but this, this will get better because this migration, we are making series of migration, not only one. So, but then when we migrate new batch, so the batch we migrate into existing port. So the cost basically is gonna be almost the same. Yeah, so the ROI keep improving. So some other benefit, of course, it's gonna be easier for newcomer to work on the on the batches. So we have, uh, we have uh, translated like Japanese to English. We have, re we have removed unused code, so it's gonna be easy. They don't have to put much effort to understand them. And we also, uh, get, we, 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 we got rid of uh, many of uh, different languages that for example, uh, some of them were written in, in Perl. We had to stop that, so they don't have to understand that. So yeah, things become easier. And then as we're doing this migration, subsequent migration, I think we, 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 we make them like faster. So for example, one of our migration that we, we did recently, so we have like 11% gap. So that's like on the budget. So this, this leave us room for improvement whereby we can do more casing. And yeah, we save some disk space. For example, we abolish some database table that we, we no longer use that are not necessary. So yeah, what I recommend is, is that if you have an old system, yeah, please uh, start migrating them because yeah, you, it's going to save you a lot of cost, maintenance cost. Yeah, it's not easy, but yeah, it's uh, it's beneficial and also automate your deployment. Yeah, make you make use of new technologies, uh, even better because I'm a developer, so I have had experience whereby I work on project, but to run the project locally, it takes a huge amount of time, whereby you have to have to do modification to the database, many things, so no manual. So yeah, what I would recommend also, if you have a system or make it deployable into local de uh, development environments, or have at least a manual whereby if you have a newcomer, they just follow that one. It's easier for them to work on it. So yeah, that's end of the journey. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I will stop sharing my screen. Hey, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. では、え、ダオダさんどうもありがとうございました。え、次の公演はですね。オッケー、Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for joining. Thank you. Yeah. え、それでは次の公演はもう今しばらくしましたら、え、開始いたします。え、そのまま